Tonight on the Broalition, we talk about how your church is killing people. And what in the world are you doing? <laughs> it's cold up in here, is all oh, I gotta say. Oh my gosh. Your church is killing men, by the way. I just want to let you know. It's killing people, but it's killing men specifically. So, you Deep are disturbed. From a bunker in a top secret location. You gotta have the wild card, baby. Woo! In southern Indiana comes a gathering of the Gospel Broalition. If it's religion, yeah. politics, like, cars, guns, cigars, oh and God. anything oh else, you, flammable, talk about him, so we're early, talking really about it. For men, by manlier men. <laughs> Get it? Got it? Good. This is oh, the Gospel Bro Coalition, and here are your hosts, no Pastor Lee, J.R. Robinson, I'm just, I'm so and the Hoosier you know, Hillbilly, Mike Paul. I can see him. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't see him. Oh, all these lights. The other show, I couldn't see him. Yeah. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Pastor Lee here, joined on my right by the Hoosier Hillbilly Mike Paul to my left, Super Christian Super Tuner, <laughs> J.R. Robinson. I'm just going to call me yes. the acronyms from now Queen on. Queen B. The, the acronym. Oh, I could call you some things. <laughs> <laughs> Family friendly show. Yeah, our last episode, if you, if you missed the news, we talked about a, a bunch of different things. Uh, you know, you need to go and check that out. Bounce back and forth. We talked about the Pickle Tickle and how we're changing the name to Let's Go Brandon. And uh, <laughs> Let's so, Go Brandon. Because, yeah, Pickle Tickle was too offensive, so yeah, we're maybe, just going to do a Let's Go Brandon. Maybe we need a new name every week. You know, Ooh, keep them on their toes. That way they don't know what we're talking about. And then about. we talked about like what happened in the, in the city near us where young kids got... Mm-hmm. Got the pickle I don't, I don't want to see your kids got the pickle tickle because that sounds horrible. <laughs> wow. They got the let's go Brandon. That's the, that doesn't sound oh, much that. better. I Did mean. somebody say they I'm going to gonna double check everything I get from the pharmacy from now on, by the way. <laughs> Did somebody, was somebody offended by last week's word? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay. No. I, just, I didn't hear anything. If they were. I'm a pastor. I'm paranoid. If they were, suck it. I didn't hear anything. Yeah. I am. I'm going I'm to check my stuff for CBS. Because you go in there and like, get sinus medication, they give you Viagra. <laughs> I was like, is your sinus is better? No, but I'm stiff as a board. <laughs> so, Longer than four hours. <laughs> yeah. See your doctor. Yeah. Oh, oh that's yeah. so funny. All right. We, we have decided um, that what we're going to do. Well, I, I, I we, decide, we say this stuff, and then we never do it. No, we do it for one week. Okay, here's it. what. Here's yeah. the tentative plan. All right. And it's very tentative. Is that we're going to start talking about things that are not in the Bible. Oh, we didn't so, we do that listen, once listen, before. We did one episode. We did one okay. episode before. Right. But listen to us. If you if you're somebody who and we get we get a lot of people who don't necessarily go to church, maybe wouldn't call themselves Christians. Just hang with us because you're going to enjoy it because you're going to learn. Oh, we're going to make it stuff. fun. We're going to make it fun and just hang in there with us on this, okay? Because um, I would say a lot of things that you don't like about the church. We're going to address. We're going to talk about. So I, I just kind of want you to just hang in there and understand. And we're going to do it from a guy's perspective. We are the Gospel Broalition. So it's going to be, you know, we're going to talk about, when we talk about things that are taking place within the church or things that are not in the Bible, a lot of things that are not in the Bible have specifically uh, have to do with the church, with the men. Uh, I'm really struggling right now. But it has to do, you know, we put a lot of stuff and we say this is what the church is supposed to do, this is what the church is supposed to do, and it affects men mm-hmm. more than anybody else. And so one of the things that we wanted to talk about tonight, and, and I don't have really have a subject, but it's basically, uh, and I've shared this with the guys before, if, if I hear in a church service one more time that I have to be better, I'm going to scream. <laughs> just right out now. I am I'm right literally, out. I'm going to tear my clothes off and run around the sanctuary. I am just going to Whoa. scream. Oh. Please. Oh. Please no, don't tell it's, that bad. it's that bad. It's that bad. I'll I'll, uh, I'll just make it worse. But it's that bad. especially if, if CBS has confused my prescription. Whoa! <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Get you some of that, ladies. <laughs> but you know, I, he's taken. I know, okay, I'm, I'm just saying he's taken. I know. Sorry. Calm down, ladies. I'm sorry, but I'm just. I every time I, it seems like, and here's the bad part about it is I'm I'm a pastor and I've I've done it. I'm I've done, it's come out of my own mouth. That's our job to tell people that. It's our job to tell people that. And when you, when I, you know, I've kind of stepped back from it. And when you're just sitting out there and you're listening to stuff and you're listening to people talk and, and it's just, I, 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 I'm so tired of it. I don't know how to, to explain to you how tired of it I am. Uh, Every time some, every church service, it's like, we got to be doing more. Got to be doing more. Got to be doing more. And I know. And that's what I want to do. I want to say, excuse me. 
Can you define more? What would you like us to do? What would you like? We're yeah. not already what's, doing? what's the minimum level I can get by with with God? Okay, <laughs> that's what I want to know because obviously you know what it is yeah. because I'm not doing it. Yeah. All right, so I want to know what what the level is, and I want to define it. And I think if if I talk to the person about that, and I say, hey, you know, why tell me what it is, and they're just kind of like, well, you know, we need to be doing this, we need to be doing this. And I'm just kind of like, are you doing this? And if they're not, I'll just say, hey, I don't think this message is for you, not for me. <laughs> yeah, sounds like you're... Uh... And I think it's not, what happens a lot of times is people get a message and then they'll just kind of share it with the church. It's like, this is what God laid on my heart. And they want to share it with the entire church. But a lot of times, maybe it was just for you. Hmm. You know, don't don't kind of share that stuff. So I'm just, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I have to wear Christian outfits. If I don't wear Christian outfits, I'm not good enough. Who said that? Really? Well, it's just kind of like, you know, are you ashamed of Jesus? You are wearing like, a skillet shirt. Right. right, right. I wore this specifically Christian. because I wanted people to think I'm a good Christian. See, yeah, I, I, I have a Christian shirt on that says suck it. Yeah. I, 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 I just have a little V cut on because I'm just rocking. By the right. way, I mean, wear. that's why. Yeah. I am I'm not ashamed of Jesus Christ, so I wore a shirt that talks about kitchenware. You know, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> You Christian know, band, pretty, if you don't know, pretty dumb band name, but they even agree. And, and they know they yeah. they know that it that it's bad. But I, so you get in there. What's ha- what happens is like okay, we need to be doing more. All right. So what what more should I be doing? And that's the question that we just don't ever. It's kind of this ambiguous thing that we say to people, and they're like, okay, what's the more? Because you got take for guys for example. You get a guy comes in there, and he sits down. He has basically turned his back on the world. He's decided to follow Christ. He's willing to die for what he believes in. He loves his wife. He loves his children. He's not addicted to porn or alcohol or uh, bad language. He he serves within the church. He gives to the church. He defends the gospel whenever he has to. He shares the gospel whenever he needs to. But does he pray 12 hours a day? That's, that's, <laughs> that's the thing. And that's what I... And part of it is when we sit down and we read the Bible, like especially the book of Acts, and then they did this, and then they did this, and then we don't realize there was like 10 years between them doing that. Because everybody's like, we got to be doing more, because look at the Church of Acts. It was 10 years between the, the, the start of the Church of Acts and Peter finally getting around to sharing the gospel with the Gentiles. <laughs> and even then, he was going up to the top of the roof to take a nap before he ate. Yeah. Like, he t- total guy thing. And Absolutely. Was, so he sees this dream, this vision that he's supposed to take the, to the gospel to the household of Cornelius, and so he's got, you know, there's, there's ten years there. They weren't yeah. like every single day. I mean, there's another story within the Bible of, of, of Simon Peter healing, healing the guy by the the gate beautiful, and I think it's the gate beautiful, beautiful gate. Whatever. Yeah, we talked about like, how many times did he pass? How many him times by? did he walk by? Him? Every day he went to, to the day. temple. Yeah. How many times did he walk by this guy? And the only time he ever does anything is when the guy actually says something to him. Yeah. You know, so there we we just kind of I could be doing more, and I don't think that's I don't think that's what they did. Yeah, I mean, Paul even t- later on when he's talking about you know, person who doesn't eat uh, work shouldn't eat, but he in that passage said all of you should aspire to live quiet lives, mind your own business, mm-hmm. and we're just kind of like well, e- 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 well that's e- the thing you the read it and it's an overview of their entire life. Right. They didn't do all that within a month. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I mean, that's an overview of their entire life. Not saying that there was probably stuff they did that wasn't recorded because right. I'm sure there is right but I just don't know if they were you know beating people's doors down 16 hours a day you know I, and that I know. that's that's part of the issue because we we're making a lot of suppositions and maybe we're doing some on our on our side but people are like making a lot of suppositions about what they were doing at that particular time when I don't I I, I, I don't know I don't I think that they would see, we're, we're kind of like, when we see the church in Acts, we think, boy, I wish we could be like them. And I think if they saw us, they would say, you're doing fine. You're, you're, the way you do church, the way you live your life is fine. Mm-hmm. But, and we, we think we're failing somehow. And we do. We, that's, that's the general consensus of all the churches that you go to, is that we're failing somehow. We're not like the other churches in the book of Acts. We're not like Ephesus. We're not like Corinth. Well, praise God, we're not like Corinth. <laughs> but you, you've got all this stuff that, that's happening and we need to be more like those churches when all those churches were ate up with all kinds of different things. Yeah, absolutely. You had a lot of people who weren't doing, they had false doctrine running through the churches and, and your church doesn't and you got people who are serving and people are doing things and I think that if Paul came to our churches today, we've always talked about it and I've said, oh, he'd be throwing chairs. No, he wouldn't. He'd sit down with us, he'd worship with us, listen to the preaching and, and, and he might be fine with what we're doing. Yeah. Because of what we have created in our minds. 
So I'm doing a lot of talking here. No, yeah, I don't good, think yeah. I don't think the church in general is doing fine. No, the the church total the I church think has kind of left of, of the United States. I don't think in general is doing fine. But I think you would be. Con- I think there are churches that are right. But I think if you're a church right now that's standing for sound doctrine. And yeah. biblical teaching, right? I think you would be commended by Paul, even in in these this sea of bad doctrine that we yes. have run around, that Paul would commend us for for standing for the truth, mm-hmm. or st- churches that do that that for yeah. standing. For, and, and but we just it's just like you're never good enough. Yeah, but you're just you never. Good and then enough. you wonder why guys don't want to go to church. Well, you can always be better, right? But I mean, guys are constantly bombarded with that at a lot, a lot of churches. That's why they don't want to go to church. It's like, well, you got to be doing this, this, and this, this. And it's like, okay, well, you know, they're, they've got a full time job. They're, they've got a full time thing with their family. They, they're trying to take care and provide for their family. They're going, a lot of them are going to church two or three times a week. Yeah. And it's just like, you want more and you want more and you want more. At some point, that guy has to have his own time to work on cars do whatever he has to have that time he's supposed to be a good father he's supposed to be a good husband he's supposed Mm -hmm. to do these particular he's got to work a job and he has his interest and his passions and his hobbies his things that he wants to do which we malign those things as well yeah Mm -hmm. especially you know we just we kind of with guys we just tell guys don't understand why we do this we tell guys they have to give up everything that's fun in order to follow jesus yeah but they don't we don't do that for women you Mm -hmm. notice that it's because everything that women think is fun is what they are preaching about us doing. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting down and reading all the time. And, you know, that's just that's the way a lot of women's personalities work. One of the things that I finally understood, and I just kind of accept quietly, is that I will never be good enough for women's Christianity. I don't want to be. Well, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's like, I don't want nothing to do with that. But I, I know it sounds weird, but this this Christianity, this very feminine Christianity that we have set up within our churches today, I will never be good enough for that because it's based off of, on a totally different set of methods. It's, it's and emotional. Values. It's emotional. It's you know, women like women like to do two things: they like to read and they like to talk. And when they talk about their understanding of Christianity, is reading mm-hmm. and talking. And guys don't like to read. Guys don't like to talk. What's the sign language you read? Well, going. I mean, right. I'm doing the, you know, the reading. Here's the, here's the Bible. And then the, the talking, you know. That's, that's beautiful. But that's, so what, you're, what we're doing is, if you go you go to churches, and the churches, you know, we've talked about this ad nauseum, but our churches are very feminine yeah. in what they do. And so you're taking a bunch of guys. That's what that book's for. Yeah. You're taking yeah. a bunch of guys and you're putting them in that situation and you're saying you've got to act, you, you've got to change who you are as an individual. And that's wrong. And that's wrong. And that's wrong. That's wrong. I think we ought to do segregated churches. Oh. <laughs> you know, the men's church will be out in like 25 minutes, right? <laughs> like, we're going to in, do our thing, we're out. Yeah. Women being there for six hours. But but it's like you, you go and you're a guy and you mow the yard. All right. And I'm terrible at analogies, but you know how it goes. Uh, you mow the yard and you weed eat. All okay, right. Yeah. And your wife or somebody comes out and goes, yeah, but you need to be doing more. So you next week you go out and you mow, you weed eat, you do the edge trimmer, you know, you do the blower, blow the grass off. They come out and go, oh, this is really, this is, well, they, they won't even tell you that. They won't even tell you it's good. They'll just come out and go, there's more you need to be doing. And next thing you know, you're down there with toenail clippers, you know, getting anything, <laughs> you know, on the sidewalk. And it's just... Guys, I'm going to tell you something, ladies, about guys. If any ladies actually watch this show, you can get to the point where you push so much that a guy will just clam up and quit. Turn, He will turn off. Yeah, He will just, he'll stop. Yep. And if your husband has just all of a sudden quit having the desire to go to church, it's probably because all he heard every time that he went was that he was never going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. And I, I struggled with that. In or, my, that he needs, or that he needs to change. He needs Everything to change. about him, he needs to change. Right. He needs to become you know, more all, feminine. He needs to become your, more emotional. All of your hobbies, well, you just, eh, you don't need to do that anymore. You, all, all, all you're going to have time for is yeah, praying that's right. and reading your Bible. That's, that's all you're right. going to have time for. you got to get rid of everything else. God should be the most important thing. And to guys, you know, guys go to work and everybody at their workplace knows that they're Christians. And they're not ashamed to talk about Jesus. It's like he is the most important thing. Yeah. And it's just like if we're not talking about it all the time. It, but see, guys are different even in their relationships with one another. And I think it goes to the relationship with Jesus and God. It's just guys can go a week without talking to one another, and they see each other, and nothing's changed in that relationship. And women are just like, we have to have that time together. I've we have a, to have quality time. I've got a best friend that I probably don't talk to twice a year. 
Oh, I got friends. But when we meet, it's just like nothing I'm, has ever happened. You know what I mean? I've got I've got but friends from my hometown the same way. Some guys just don't like being around people that much. And 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 guys are <laughs> guys are just kind of of like that. So it's just because you know they don't spend as much quality time with Jesus as you think they should doesn't mean that the relationship has changed at all. Mm-hmm. It's just the way guys are. Now I know that what we're saying here is just heresy. I know. Well, then like you said, okay, so some women like to have their quiet time. A lot of women where they just sit in their little quiet room or whatever and they do it. Not, no qualms against them. Do what you want to do. Why can't we have that while we're driving? Because I tell you what, my mind is constantly going when I'm driving. You know, I'm zoning out. So why can't your quiet time be in some place like I've that? I've done entire sermons on a mower. Oh, a mower is one of the best places mower, to I, I'd love to mow. Because I sit there and I don't love to mow. Well, you have an electric you have a lawnmower, stamp. so nobody would like to mow with that. Gay, <laughs> you know. My yard is a postage stamp too, though, so I can't have a big fancy mower. You can. Like you it doesn't can. matter. Up and down. That's yeah. Like back and forth three times. I'd be done. He wouldn't get much thinking done. I know. His sermon would be very short. <laughs> but I think uh, what I've learned over the years and what I would change. A lot of th- a lot of mistakes I've made, but one of the things I would change, I would encourage guys more. I think guys need encouragement. Yeah. And I think instead of just every time we, we meet together and you point a finger at a guy and say, you're not doing what you need to be doing. And, and, you know, some guys may respond to that, but most guys respond to, hey, man, it's good to see you. Keep it up. You know? Yes. But I think we all shared a similar an, an opposite opinion two years ago, a year ago, two years ago, where we didn't want to be patted on the back. We didn't want to be I, coddled. I am right? not the guy that. Yeah, I, I'm not the guy you could come up to and go, good job. You know, I'm, I just, I don't. Right, right. But right. at the same time, you come to me and tell me I'm not doing enough. Yeah, that's and I know, it. That's, that's the button. This is That's it. worse than coming to me and telling me I'm doing a good job this all the time. This is the conversation right, no, no, no. I've had with a lot of people is, I don't need to be told I'm doing a good job. Absolutely. I don't want to be told I'm doing a bad job either. Right. That's, and and when, that's I talk about it, when I talk about encouragement, I'm not talking about going... Hey Mike, good yeah. to see you, bud. You keep that up. Yeah, that would right. I, up I, top. Yeah, you know, woo, I, that's I too much right there. I don't want to do anything like that. I'm just saying that if if somebody, you know, if a guy comes up to the church and he mows your yard, just go by and go, hey, yard looks good. You know, yeah, that's all you got to do. Just yeah. encourage it instead of saying, you know what, there's more you could have done. Yeah. So, oh, you missed that edge over there. You know what's going to happen? He's not. We need to not have any gas in. Wait, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's not going to mow the yard again. Nope. He's going to say, all right, see you. Yep. That's exactly because yeah. that's the way guys are. That's a guy mentality, and and we have not yet figured that out. And I, and that's kind of the way I was in my life. I you know, I just struggled with everything was not good enough. Mm-hmm. And then you know, and I've shared the story. If you look back at previous podcasts, just that one day when I finally understood what grace was. And if you keep trying to be good enough, you don't ever understand grace. Yes, grace is you'll never be good enough. And so why keep trying? Why I think we do a lot of stuff within our. Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of works based mm-hmm. religion that we're doing because we're we're trying to earn our goodness. We're trying to earn God's favor when He's already given it His favor. That's yeah. what grace is, unmerited favor. And so I, I just think we just kind of gotten away from that. You know, he t- he flashed up the sign. I got a lot more stuff to do. Should I just say yeah. this, or should we keep going? Keep going. All right. Um, Who you got to do? Men, okay. men and women do everything differently. They do church differently they do relationships differently and we just cannot force guys to do it i wouldn't even force a guy to do it the way i do it no but we're kind of trying to force guys to do it the way women do it and it's just not it's not working i mean look at your churches they, they, they don't have anything oh I man how many times have you seen it in just any church you've ever been to where the woman goes and the man stays at home yep mm-hmm. it and, happens and the, all the time because the man is sick of being told he's not good enough, or hey, when you come in here, all this stuff you're doing, who we got to change that. Oh, don't you even know? get me started on that. I, I don't. Um, every time we talk about idols within the church, it's always something that guys like doing. Hmm. Nobody ever stands up and goes, "That scrapbooking you're doing, <laughs> that's an idol." I don't think I've ever heard that one. Yeah, that breastfeeding, that's an idol. <laughs> Like if your child is six years old, yeah, it probably yeah. is at that point. Well, we, yeah. had, we had somebody at the church one time, the kid was four years old. Yeah, that's just... Ooh, it was that's creepy. A little, that's a little too old. It was creepy. Yeah. But nobody ever says anything like... But we use idolatry so flippantly within the church. Idolatry, listen, the definition of idolatry is you turning your back on God and worshiping another God. 
And so you, if, if a guy still goes to church, still loves the Lord, still but his, is passionate about other things, that's not idolatry. Until those things come before God. Yeah. No, right. no. Idolatry would be you denying God and worshiping a false God. That's what idolatry would be. But then again, what's what's the definition of anything coming before God? I mean, I've already decided to oh, turn gosh. my whole life over yeah, to him. I, that's the thing. Is it just because I spent four hours in church versus five hours doing something else? Okay. Have I put something else? Where is the line? That's what I want to know. Where is the line at? Yeah. I, I, there are things that guys do that are colossal waste of time. I have lots of those. I get those. And that's fine. <laughs> but guys need that. Guys need those things where they can sit and veg out. And just kind of do this stuff. Yeah. But to make the point, to make the, the theological leap to where we're going from something that a guy is passionate about to idolatry is dangerous and is wrong. Like, like I said, if, for instance, working on cars, if the guy's going to work on cars and skip out on his duties as being Christian, right. going to church, uh, I'm not going to go to church this week, I'm just going to work on my car. That's where I see that, that yeah. being a problem. Okay, but even in that extreme situation where you just talked about that it's still not idolatry it's, it's still not wrong. it's not the it's definition still, yeah, it's, it's wrong not idolatry, but it's wrong but, but it's i can see where that's i can see where somebody would say well now that's a problem i get it that's a problem now it's a because problem because you're yes. putting you're putting at that point you are putting Agreed. whatever 100%. before god so 100 percent. but once again if you're doing your duties but you haven't if you if you if, if you're doing that it's not that the car has become his god that he is worshiping. Yeah, I I, I agree with you on that. And we yes. and we take something and we take something that, that a guy is passionate about and it's idolatry. But for for women, things that they're passionate about are never idolatry, because every time they talk about idolatry, it's always you know sports, video games, cars, you know, and that, and and that's the list. Everything that guys like. I've never heard him mention mowing grass though. No, I never said that. Huh. I don't get it. That's odd. It's almost like that has to be done. I would never worship mowing grass. <laughs> it, you know, the, from about April till July, yes, I do. And then after that, nope, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> That's like I've had enough mowing grass. So basically that. the guys come into your church every Sunday and you tell them that everything that they like is evil and they need to pray an hour a day and read their Bibles four hours a day and you wonder why they freaking don't come back. That's why. And you tell them every single week that what they're doing is not good enough. And, and they're getting fed up. And I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. I, I seriously don't blame them. I mean, we could we could spend the rest of our lives talking about all the stupid stuff that, that we do in a church that's not biblical. Oh, we're all. going to. Oh, we're going to. Oh, we're going to. Yeah. All this stuff, you need to have. A, you need you need to read that Bible, even though the Gutenberg Bible didn't come out to 1455. Mm. So I guess those guys were all bad Christians. 1,400 years of bad Christians? Of all, 14, yeah, 1,400 <laughs> years of bad Christianity. Dang it. I mean, we took the most powerful book in the world and put it in the hands of idiots. <laughs> that we did. That's true. We did. There's a, I, I'm all for the, the mass publication of the Bible. There's good points, and then there's a lot of bad points, too. Yeah. Because we, gave, bad, we gave people, hey, who had a lot of free time, hey, here's a Bible. And all they did was sit around and read it and go, hey, you know what? I'm reading Romans 8 here. I think I have a prayer language. <laughs> Like, no, you don't, Sparky. Um, <laughs> wow, well, you just offended 90% of our audience on that one. Don't care. <laughs> but um, Well, it is something to think about. You think about early versions of the Bible being copied. It was a massive thing. Mm -hmm. Super important, super long and drug out process. And now we're just printing it out like yeah. putting it in the hands of everybody. Damn, different, different, different versions, different translations. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, and... and, and like I said earlier with you guys, I mean, it's a good thing in the sense that it, it opened up a lot of people to the gospel. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fantastic. But there's also a lot of bad that has taken place. Well, I mean, how many times have we noticed just the difference between translations? Yeah. It, a verse can be completely taken out of context just because of the tra a certain word of the translation. Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, that's something you got to watch out for, too. And then people who come in who read their Bibles all the time are unteachable. It, well, and a lot of those people that read their Bible all the time, they may, they may not know stuff like that. If they're not plugged into a group with other people where they can... Exactly. Where they can iron sharpens iron scenario, they could read that, and they could that could be their gospel. And it might be completely wrong. I mean, because people have a Bible in their home, now they're like, I don't need to go to church. Mm -hmm. Because I have this big family Bible here that hasn't been open in 10 years. But it's... <laughs> It, it, there's a lot of good thing, things that come from it, but I, I'm pretty adamant about, I don't think, 
I don't think the Bible should be studied alone. I just I I think it's you can do it some, but trade carefully. But I think it needs to be done in a group setting. I I, yeah, I think you're you get a lot more out of it in the group setting. Oh, absolutely. I think yes. you learn more in a group setting. But I think if you sit down and you go, you know, you just sit there and read it for yourself. You have nobody there who's gifted in teaching or has the spiritual gifts of knowledge or wisdom helping you go through that scripture. Especially if you're a new Christian. Yeah, you're a new Christian. If you're a new Christian, you've got to plug yourself and, and into the first thing we tell a new Christian is open that Bible and start reading. Yeah, it's like, no, it's like, They're like no, I don't understand it. Just you, read it anyway. Yeah, they, <laughs> you need yeah, to they disciple. don't understand nothing. and, and They need to be discipled. Yeah. I mean, that's the key to that one. Yeah, here, here's, a, here's a gun. Take it. <laughs> Clean your ears out with it. Yeah. It's just, it, we don't, we need to take that person and, and I, I, you know, put them with somebody. Yeah. And say, you know, can you, you read it together and let that person walk you through it at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And then we need to teach people sound doctrine. What, what are the major tenets of the church? What are the major doctrines of the church? We need to teach those things instead of just going, here you go, Bobby, eat up. And, you know, and, and pretty soon, you know, he's coming back thinking Jesus and Spider Man are the same person. <laughs> it, 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 but that's what we do. Or he's going to start a new domination. The yeah, domination. he is. He's, he's gonna like, start I got a new denomination. Domination. Right. I like that domination. better. Domination. <laughs> but he's going to come Ooh. in, and all of a sudden, Bobby thinks he knows more than the pastor. Yeah. He does. So he's not going to listen to him yeah. anymore. So he's going to go find his own church. And what happens is. Go, he, yeah, he's going to go find a church that lines up with what he thinks. Exactly. Exactly. He gets in there. He gets his own doctrine. He's going to find that church that matches his doctrine because they're out there. It doesn't matter how nutty you are. There's yeah, a there church out there for you. And so I just, people like, well, the Bible says to study to show yourself approved. But Paul was talking to one individual, a pastor at the church of Ephesus, Timothy. It wasn't a mandate for everybody. So I, I think the Bible needs to be studied, not read. And I think it needs to be done with more people so that you can, you can have somebody sitting there going, you know what? Uh, that's not. Actually. Yeah, if you say something stupid, somebody can slap you. Right, or you work through it together. That's what we yeah. do in our Bible study. We go through a scripture, we work it out together. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I we've lost everybody now. They gone. They gone. Just as soon as I said, don't read your Bible. That's why. That's only going to come out of this. <laughs> yeah, Lee told me not to read my Bible. That's what I. I got never out. said that. He wasn't talking to everybody though. I mean, there are there are people that are. It gifted or channeled, whatever you want to say, in interpreting the Bible. Absolutely. Those people should study yes. the Bible, right? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And those people lead the conversations when they're in groups. You know what I mean? Right. It doesn't matter a hill of beans if you sit around and read the Bible all the time. If, if you don't not, understand if you, it. If you don't teach people. Yeah. No. Yeah. Are you teaching anybody? Do you have a group that you're teaching? Then why are you, do, why are you doing all that work? What are you doing with it? I mean, that, if you're not applying it to your life, what are you doing with it? Right. I, I just think that we, we take all these things within the church and we elevate them up to church tradition and doctrine. And that's where we're getting in trouble. It just is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's still hope for the guys. There <laughs> is. But we've got to do things differently. And we've that's that's been our talk since the beginning of this podcast. we got to tear it down. we got we we got to start over. You just can't change it. you got to burn it down to do it again. And uh, I don't know how we'll do that. All right, we love you guys. Thank you so much for watching the Broalition. Be sure to like and subscribe down at the bottom. If we offended you, we didn't really mean to. Yeah, but so we don't really care either. Most of the things that we say are in tongue in cheek, but um, you know, a lot of them are not. And and but we have a heart for guys, and what we do, we don't have a lot of people who watch because there's not a lot of us out there. Mm-mm. They're just not. Guys have either said, "I'm going to go to church and I'm going to become this effeminate metrosexual," or they've quit going. And the guys who have said, we're going to stay in church, but we're going to do it the way God intended for it to be as far as male-female relationships within the church and how church is supposed to be done. We're going to do it biblically instead of, you know, chickified. Um, There is a group out there. They're very small, but um, we hope to grow, make it bigger. We love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you later. See you. Peace. Gospel Bro Volition. Almost did done. the white privilege. Right <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Oh, my. oh my gosh. Ammo, It'll be shut down for sure. Multiple cigar wrappers and an empty bottle 
of bourbon. Mission accomplished. You've been listening to the Gospel Bro Alition with Pastor Lee, J.R. Robinson, and the Hoosier Hillbilly, Mike Paul. A show for men, by men. If it's religion, politics, guns, guns, cigars, and anything else flammable, we're talking about it. We hope you enjoyed the show. We know we had fun. We'll be back soon, and thank you for being a part of the Gospel Bro.